Support for today's episode of Parenting Great Kids comes from Protect America. Going out of town this summer? Protect what matters most with 24-7 professionally monitored home security from Protect America. The nation's best home security starts at only $19.99 a month. For over 25 years, Protect America has offered award-winning home security with low monthly costs, low upfront costs, and locked-in rates. The other guys just can't say that. Visit protectamerica.com slash Meg to get $5 off your monthly monitoring. And by ButcherBox. ButcherBox delivers 8 to 11 pounds of grass-fed beef, free-range chicken, and heritage breed pork directly to your door. Each box is full of humanely raised, antibiotic, and hormone-free meat, which is enough for 18 to 25 individual-sized meals. It's basically your meat for the month in a box. And friends, I eat the meat at Butcher Box, and it's wonderful. Order now and get free bacon in your first box and $15 off at ButcherBox.com slash Meg. You can cancel any time without penalty. So give it a try. That's butcherbox.com slash Meg. For 30 plus years, I've seen every type of child grow up. Instead of giving me what I wanted, she gave me what I needed, which was truth. Don't let emotions win. Let truth win. Do your very best, and you should have a lot of fun while you do it. And the better you get at something, the more fun you're going to have at something. You moms and dads are wired with everything you need to be a parent to a great kid. Welcome to Parenting Great Kids. This is episode number 28, Growing Up Ramsey. I'm your host, Dr. Meg Meeker. Friends, today we have a really special episode. Of course, many of you know Dave Ramsey, but did you know that all three of his adult children work with him? Well, I had the pleasure of being joined by all three of Dave and Sharon Ramsey's adult children, Denise, Rachel, and Daniel. We'll be talking about what it was like growing up as a Ramsey, the lessons they learned from their dad whom I can tell you they respect tremendously, and how their relationship with their dad has shaped the people that they are today. Also in this episode, I'll be answering a question from a mom trying to deal with a moody teenager. As always, I'll share my points to ponder so that you can start using them right away. And parents, as a reminder, don't just download episodes. Click subscribe, because when you do that, you're joining my parenting revolution and every new episode will automatically show up in your subscribed list. You won't regret it. We'd love for you to write us a review on iTunes, so please let us know what you think about these podcasts. Also, we're not only on iTunes, but the Parenting Great Kids podcast is available in the Google Play Store and on Stitcher. So no matter where you get your podcasts, subscribe today and don't miss a single episode. So parents, thanks for listening. This is episode number 28. Stay with us. So let's go to my points to ponder. You will hear Rachel and Daniel and Denise talk about Dave in a remarkable way. And one of the things that I think you're going to take away from this conversation is first, make sure that you, mom or dad, and particularly talking to dads here because we're talking about Dave Ramsey's influence on his kids, make sure that you are a good model to your kids. You've heard the saying that more is caught than taught. And it's absolutely true. Your kids watch you all the time. I would love to say they watch you because they're interested in you, but what they're more interested in is what you're thinking about them and what you want to say to them. And if you like what they're doing or do you like the way they're dressed and they're getting clues from you about how you feel about them that they then pull inside themselves and it becomes part of their identity. In addition to that, your kids mimic you. You know this because I'm sure as a parent, you have heard words come out of your mouth that are the exact phrases that your father said to you or your mother said to you. So it's very important if you want your kids to grow up to be great adults and solid adults who tell the truth and live lives of integrity, you've got to model it. Again, modeling is so important because you're not only showing them the best way to live, but you're also helping to create a strong identity in each of your kids. So you have to examine yourself pretty well. You have to say, how am I talking? Am I talking to my kids the way I want? Am I using the tone of voice I want? 
learned. If I want to teach my kids to be honest, am I living honestly or am I telling little white lies around them? You will hear the kids talk a lot about intentional parenting, you know, making a plan and doing what you feel is right and then sticking to that. So make sure you're a good model to your kids. The second point to ponder, small moments make the biggest impact on your kids. You will hear Rachel talk about many of the boundaries that her father set for her. But it's interesting because as you listen to her talk, listen to her tone of voice. She doesn't talk about her father as being overly harsh or overly authoritative. And yet he was very strong and gave rules. You'll hear her talk about a wonderful story about what her father used to do after every time he had to discipline her. It's really lovely. And those are the moments, I don't know how long they took, but in those moments of being disciplined by her father and then what followed up afterwards impressed upon her something very, very important that wherever there is discipline, there is grace and there is kindness. Listen to Daniel talk about the moments that he spent with his father in a boat. And it doesn't even matter what he did in the boat, but he remembers those very, very fondly. And I was fortunate enough to be able to see Daniel's face as he talked about his father. I wish that you could see it because whenever Daniel begins to talk about his dad, he just beams with joy. So it's really important. A lot of parents get hung up on doing things that are momentous in their kids' lives. I need to take them on a big trip. I need to take them to Disney World. I need to you know, make sure I get them this. But really, the things that change who your kids become are the small moments that you have with them, even if it's disciplining your kids. And third, Don't be afraid to be the authority in the home. Don't be afraid to be the authority. Any of you that listen to Dave on the radio program know that he has a strong personality. And the kids grew up with a strong dad. But it's very important, as you will hear these kids talk about the fact that they gained a lot of self-esteem and a lot of self-confidence by living under an authority, not an oppressive authority, not a overbearing, over-controlling authority, but it's so important for kids to feel safe and secure to be able to look up to their parent, to respect their father, because kids want to please their fathers. And if they know what their fathers want, and if they know that their fathers are invested enough to give them a curfew, to tell them what they can do and what they can't do. And dads, I'm talking to you when your daughters are dating. Do not hesitate to step in and say, you know what, honey, you can't date that guy. He's bad news. And to be willing to endure the screaming and the crying and the whatever. But deep down, that makes kids feel so loved. So being the authority in your home helps your kids grow up with a higher self-esteem, to be more self-confident, to be more secure in who they are, but also to feel so loved. Kids need parents to parent. They have a lot of friends and many parents today, and even really good dads, are afraid to be the authority because they don't want to be overbearing. But listen to these adult children talk about growing up with a dad who was a very good authority. Many of you know that I have a passion about the relationship between children and fathers. There's so many good men out there trying to be good fathers, and they're not getting much help. Every child wants to know his father because he's born with an innate belief that you, his dad, are his hero. And who wants to be denied a hero, especially a personal one? Whatever your situation in life, the fact that you are a father doesn't change, and neither does the fact that your children need you. If you are married, divorced, widowed, or a stepfather, and you want what is best for your children, then I have something to share with you. My new book, Hero, Becoming the Strong Father Your Children Need, will release May 15th, and it is now available for pre-order at herodadbook.com. In Hero, I share how and why you should strive to be a hero father and the impact your presence and involvement has on your children. When you pre-order Hero, you will also receive a bundle of free digital resources created especially for you. For more information on Hero and all the free bonus materials, just visit herodadbook.com. That's herodadbook.com and pre-order your copy today.
So I want you now to listen in on the conversation that I had with Denise, Rachel, and Daniel about lessons they learned from their father, Dave Ramsey. Well, we have a special treat today in studio. We have Dave Ramsey's adult children. We have Denise Ramsey Whittemore. We have Rachel Ramsey Cruz, and we have Daniel. Thanks, guys, for being here. Yeah, thanks, thanks. for having us. Glad now, to be here. Denise, you're the oldest. Yeah. Was Dave harder on you than the other two or no? Oh, gosh. Or, or did you get it. special treatment? Or I could answer no. that for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, I would yes. say, I mean, I wouldn't say hard, but I just think the whole parenting thing, it's just with your first one, you're still figuring out. You don't know what you're out. doing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I look at um, our firstborn and my husband and I, we're still figuring things out, you know, and it's all new. So um, I don't know. I wouldn't say he was harder on me necessarily, but... Well, I always think back on like curfews, for instance, like if Denise was a minute more late, strict, I guess. she would be like a week, cra- like she had a thing and I was a little bit more lax. I don't even think Daniel had a curfew. No, I mean, yeah. by the time he got around to me, I, yeah, they thought I was perfect. <laughs> they, they, were, they were completely they, oblivious. They were exhausted. They were, they were exhausted. exhausted. They were exhausted. Um, now, Rachel, you work very closely with your dad. The cool thing is all three of you kids... I don't know what to call you. You're not kids. You can call us kids. Yeah. Kids. Okay. <laughs> okay. But you're adults. All three of you work with your dad. And that says a lot about your parents and how well they parented you. Rachel, you work very closely with your dad. You travel together. You speak together. You write books together. What have you learned about your dad in your work, working with him that you didn't know before? You know, one thing that he... uh harps on so much and I feel like at first it almost was frustrating because I was like what and then now I've really grown to appreciate it is his strive for excellence and so whether it's a marketing piece going out on an email or we're doing a sound check at a venue I mean he's so diligent in every little thing and I think that's partly why he's been successful I mean he he doesn't let little things slide and so the excellence factor is up all the time and and I appreciate that like even you know we're at smart conference you speak with us there uh you know he'll go out during sound check and go to the very top of the balcony and see this I mean he's he's just he's all into it and he's been doing it for 20 plus years and I'm like I, I've been doing it for seven and I'm tempted just to go out and be like, check one, two, check, check. The mic's yeah. good. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> I'm you ready know? to go. Yeah. yeah, but he's so diligent in those things and really strives for excellence. And so I, I so appreciate that about mm-hmm. him. Was he that way in his parenting? Uh, I mean, I would say... It's different. It, it, it I know different. it's different. Well, it, I, I feel like his, his standard for us, I, I feel like we, we probably got more of the personal side of him. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Of course. So, so I think with that comes grace and conversation and all of that. When you're doing business and you got to get stuff done, it's a little bit more tactical. I mean, he's a great, he's, he's great at relationships within the team members and stuff and building a great culture within our company. So yeah, I mean, I would say we probably got some grace. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> he, was a good, he was a good dad in that yeah. sense. Like, yeah. 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 It's so funny because I see him only professionally of course and and he is a great man i mean what you see is what you get mm-hmm. dave's yes. dave mm-hmm. you yes. know he's just exactly and i really admire that because a lot of people aren't like that but then when you go behind closed doors and you're living with somebody it can be different now daniel you're the only son and i have heard your dad speak about each of you kids and you know he's just so proud of each of you and i remember daniel your dad talking to me about a graduation party he had and there were cigars and this kind of a thing <laughs> <laughs> he likes oh, yeah. cigars. <laughs> what has it been like being the only Ramsey son? I don't know exactly what the significant difference would be between, you know, I can perceive what the differences may have been for my sisters versus me. Um, I think there's unique things that being a son, as you described it, that change that relationship. I'm sure your dad was a good role model. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to ask some observers, how is Daniel like Dave? Decisive. Okay. He knows what he wants, especially like in board meetings and stuff, because that's when Mm -hmm. work wise all three of us are together with him and then some other uh key leaders in the company and when things happen or conversation daniel's very decisive like he knows what he wants and so i see that totally in daniel and the utilitarian factor of like kind of the entrepreneur building Mm -hmm. something i see that he thinks like your dad yes Mm -hmm. he's a natural leader i feel like and a leader with a big heart you know a lot of times people see dad as like just you know a big leader in the spotlight but he has a huge heart behind it as well and so i see that in daniel as well you know he cares about people and their feelings i think when i 
when I look at my dad, the things that I value so much and that I really want to emulate more as a man, I value his passion and I value his energy. Every time he walks into a situation, he is passionate and he is fully invested and energetic and excited about that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, emotionally, he's all in with Mm -hmm. whatever he's doing. And so that's something that I I really look at and I, I want more of and I wish and desire to have more of those qualities for sure. Does he bring that same passion and investment and desire into his parenting like as your dad? I would imagine he would. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. I think parenting today looks so much different than it did. Do you know what I mean? Like so totally. going back in my memory to the living at home. Well, and I feel like he was intentional, especially during our teenage years. Um, I know, Meg, you talk a lot about how important that is in raising a teenage daughter for the dad's role. And um, I know, at least I felt like he was there at certain points and was where a lot of dads would have ran away from the situation. He, you know, stood his ground and set up boundaries for us when we couldn't, or at least me oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah were you the were you the one who gave your parents a run for their money or no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay uh-oh rachel's sitting here shaking her head shaking no. her head. Call anybody out. yeah, yeah. No, 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 no 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 you know your dad very graciously wrote a forward to my book hero and i talk about dads as as being a strong father their children need and i thought immediately of your dad because your dad reminds me mm-hmm. a lot of my dad he's a man's man you know you know what he thinks you know what he wants you know what he's going to do and there's no question what is your dad or has your dad been your hero i mean i would say yes when i think about the men in my life obviously my husband rises to the surface in that but dad is closely behind i mean he shaped so much i guess i could speak for all of us but you all can have your own thought on that but shaped so much of who i am and i think the influence of a dad i didn't appreciate as much until i got older and now as an adult and especially raising a daughter i look at my relationship with winston my husband and amelia my daughter and that and even winston has said to me and has said to dave has thanked dave for how he raised us because he said i get the benefit now of having a healthy woman into marriage because she had a great dad. Do you know what I mean? And so like, yeah. I'm like, I never would have thought about that ripple effect when I wore some probably crazy short Hollister skirt going to the movie and he made me go change. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the, the teenage yeah. years of being frustrated. Yeah. But he was setting me up to learn dignity about myself. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like those things, those hard conversations and those, those times you butt heads with your dad growing up. You know, I look at him. Was he perfect? No, he wasn't perfect. But gosh, has shaped so much. I think mm-hmm. of yeah of who I've become and still so convicted and has integrity I mean he is still who he is even though all of this is here of of the Dave Ramsey people think of I can tell as I watch all of you speak that you really respect your dad Mm -hmm. yeah there's a lot of respect and admiration Denise how has Dave been your hero you know I would say I mean along I mean a lot of what Rachel had said but just setting a good example for me as a mom and um you know during the teenage and college years where you are dating, you know, you look to him and you're like, this is who the type of guy I want to marry, you know. And so just finding that same character qualities in a husband while dating and just him not letting me go below my standards, you know, calling me out on that. And so I would say that. And then also him setting boundaries in his own life to make our family succeed. He's a very disciplined man. Yes. And he modeled that to you. Yes. So he mm-hmm. sets clear boundaries in his life, not just in your lives. And I think that's really important because kids want to see their parents living with the integrity that the parents are expecting from them. And that's really, really important, modeling that. Um, what character qualities of your dad's did you want in a husband? Christ-like. I mean, that would I would say is the big one. Someone who's not scared to confront a situation, but do it in a loving way, I would say are my biggest two. Rachel, how about you? Well, it's so funny because Winston and, and Bill, Denise's husband, personality wise are kind of opposite of Dave. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're more introverted. They're more chill, I would say, you know what I mean? Where Dave's mm-hmm. a little bit more in your face and stuff. So it's funny, the personality traits of our, both of our husbands are kind of different than dad, yeah. but with the same character. But yes. Yeah. But the yeah. same value system yes. is, is exactly consistent, yeah, ex- which is so funny. Exactly. Yeah. It's the deep stuff that really counts. And, and it's I, funny that Denise and I married similar guys. Now that I'm thinking about it because we're so different. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I yes. remember when my daughter was dating her now husband, she called me and she said to me one time, you know, mom, one of the reasons I think I love Jonathan, and it sounds really creepy, but he reminds me of dad. And what a testimony to my husband, yeah. you know, that he had, he had shown these character qualities. You're not married, Daniel. No, I'm not. 
And so you want all those beautiful ladies listening out there (laughs) to know that. But in your parenting, you felt it sounds like your father was pretty strict with you kids in a good way. Mm hmm. Will you clear lines, clear discipline, clear lines. Mm -hmm. Will you be that way with your children or will you relax a little more? I absolutely think that that the clarity that we had growing up was huge. I mean, really shaped who we are in so many ways. We've talked about decisiveness. I think that has really poured into all of us because of how clear we had direction growing up from both of our parents. They really said what they meant. And, you know, when we didn't take it seriously, they made it known that it was serious, you know, in, in a healthy way. So, yeah, they uh, they definitely did a great job of having clear boundaries and showing us basically how to walk and set a good example so we could walk in their path. And something they did that was a good balance that I'm thinking of now, and I don't know how they did it, or at least this is how I feel. They were strict with us and they had clear like, no, you're not going there. Like, I mean, it was mm-hmm. it was very known, you know, their feelings on things and that they were the parent. We were the child. There was that. But yet, as we shifted from children to adults, they did a good job shifting the relationship to friendship. I feel very free to speak to both of my parents with my own opinion and like, I'm going to do life a little different, maybe here or there. And they're good. Like they're, it's, it, I don't have this fear of, oh my gosh, you know, I can't disagree with them. They mm-hmm. still let us have our own opinions and thoughts. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it was probably less the younger we were, <laughs> yeah. but for some reason, but now as an adult, I look at that. And I'm like, I so appreciate that. Like there's, there's that relationship there now. But you have a lot of security in that relationship. And that's why you Maybe do that. You, it, yeah. you don't carry a sense that I can't do that because I'm going to let my mom or dad down, mm-hmm. particularly my dad. Yeah. And a lot of adults, older adults, live with that sense that I can't because I've got to have my dad respect and admire who I am. Parents, I hope you're enjoying my conversation with Denise, Rachel, and Daniel. We need to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Parents, there's always an excuse for not eating healthy. You don't have a personal nutritionist, or you don't have access to the right ingredients, or you're too tired to plan and shop and cook. Well, your body doesn't understand excuses. That's why Sunbasket got rid of them. Sunbasket makes it easy to cook delicious, seasonal, nutritious meals in your own kitchen. You'll get organic, non-GMO ingredients from the best farms and fishermen sent directly to your door. You can choose from paleo, gluten-free, vegetarian, breakfast, and family options created by an award-winning chef and approved by nutritionists. Each Sun Basket meal comes with pre-measured fresh ingredients and easy-to-follow directions. From start to finish, you'll have dinner on the table in 30 minutes. And it's delicious. Eating right starts now with Sun Basket. Go to sunbasket.com slash Meg today and get your first three meals free. That's sunbasket.com slash M-E-G to get three healthy, easy-to-prepare meals free. Parents, if you're like me, you're always on the lookout for the easiest way to get the products you need for your family at the best price and in a way that saves you time. Let me introduce you to Jet.com. Jet.com offers the online shopping experience that you've been looking for. They have a great selection of thousands of everyday essentials that your family uses, all at competitive prices. As you shop on Jet.com, the prices drop. The more you add to your cart, the more you save. Jet.com offers 24-7 customer service, free returns within 30 days, and two-day shipping is always free for orders over $35. With Jet.com, there is no membership or annual fees, so you get all the benefits without paying extra. Friends, I love Jet.com because it's easy for me to order what I need on the go, and I don't have to waste time wandering store aisles hoping I can find what I need without spending too much. I love that there's no membership fee and that I get my order fast. Right now, Jet.com is offering an amazing deal to our listeners. Visit Jet.com and enter promo code MEG at checkout to get $10 off your first three orders over $35. Again, that's Jet.com and promo code MEG for $10 off your first three orders of $35 or more. Terms and conditions may apply. See Jet.com for details. I didn't ask you, Daniel. I was waiting for it. How is your dad your hero? You know, my my dad has always been my hero. And it's been... From the time you were... When did you first realize that? It it was just always a given. I don't don't think... I can't remember back a time uh, when I like recognized that or called that out. It was just always a central figure in my life who I wanted to be more like and who I desired 
to grow up and be him. And obviously, as I've grown older, I've become my own man and want to be different in, in several ways. But ultimately, the amount of passion, the way he lives his life and so intentionally in everything he does, the level of influence that he naturally has over situations, over people, I desire to be all those things. Those are some pretty big shoes to fill, or cowboy boots, I should say. <laughs> Your dad has some seriously cool cowboy boots. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Is that hard for you? Because you're never going to be Dave Ramsey. You're going to be Daniel. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I am. I think that's the short answer is, is yes. Yeah. But I mean, obviously there is there is internal struggle there and there is you know insecurity that lies there. And I think a lot of that lies in a mixture of fear and pride of me fearing that I won't live up, fearing that I won't be able to fill those shoes and pride of wanting to be my own man and pride of wanting to do something different or be, or be better or, or whatever. And definitely struggle with those things. So I don't have those completely reconciled. But Ultimately, I do aspire to follow God's call for my life, and I strongly feel, and I've, I've felt the Lord uh, really pull me in this direction to follow in His footsteps in some ways. But as far as like my leadership style, my personality, I, I think I'll be vastly different. And there are things that are good that I see in Him that I wish uh, I could be more of, but I recognize that I don't want to be that because that's not who I am, and I much rather do things differently, not because it's right or wrong, but because it's not who I am. And something tells me that your dad wants that too. Your dad yeah, does absolutely. not want a mini him. Your, your dad embraces all of who Daniel is. Let's talk. We only have a couple minutes left, but I'd love to hear some of your greatest memories with your dad. Times in your life when something happened that it changed who you were or you learned something about your dad. The first thing that kind of comes to my mind is um, we've grown up him taking us out on the boat and on the water, just life on the water. And just as little kids, him teaching us how to water ski. Mm. And he was like, every time you get up, we can go to the gas station and buy a bag of Skittles. Oh, bribery. So, <laughs> right, sorry, for sorry. bribery. Yeah, yeah. But it was just the lesson of never give up. Like, put your mind to something and stick with it. And if it's not your thing, that's great. But at least try to get there and, you know, see if it is your thing. Very cool. Teaching a kid to water ski takes a lot of patience. Oh. <laughs> yes. 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 A lot. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, oh we're my circling, gosh. you're circling, oh. you're oh, circling. So yeah. bad. Yeah. So yeah. bad. Yeah. yeah. I would say a, a memory I always have when people ask, like, what's a memory with your dad? And it's not very life changing, but I think it's a beautiful picture of this grace versus truth. You know, when it comes to parenting, you know, is it too much grace? Are you, you know, are you enabling too much? Are you too strict? Is it too much truth? Every time after we, they spanked. So people out there, you may agree or disagree. That's how we were raised. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I yeah. know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but every time after that wooden spoon mm -hmm. <laughs> hit the bottom, you know, of course we would, I was probably more dramatic than they were, but, you know, scream and cry and go to, to the room. But every time consistently, I mean, without fail, he would come up with a warm, hot washcloth <gasps> and he'd sit on our bed and he would wipe my face and he'd talk through what happened. And this, you know, Rachel, this is what, you know, you did. I told you not to do this and you did this and I warned, you know, like he walked through the situation, but I just remember that and of course I can't even tell you what the situations were but that warm washcloth for whatever reason I remember that and it was just this love after a reprimand after a consequence but yet that unconditional love it's there and that he always will come through that door and he mm. did always yeah and so yeah so I so I so appreciate that because I think it's just a beautiful picture of even our relationship with God you know within that of you know sometimes we do things and, and you feel that you reap what you sow and sometimes it's not good you know but that comfort of that unconditional love of a father absolutely our relationship with our fathers helps us or hurts us in our relationship with the Lord because yeah. many people who have a bad relationship with their dads don't want anything to do with yeah. God the Father. How about you, Daniel? Fun memories with Dave. Denise stole mine. Oh, <laughs> <the lady. laughs> no, oh for, they barefoot. They got more intense than yeah. we do. Okay. You know, for me, the lake has always been just a really special place for me where, you know, I would describe the lake as the most peaceful place I can go. And I think a lot of my memories of the lake and growing up was being on the boat and as my father, like I so desired to impress and to be you know, good enough and, and all of those things and learning to do the different things behind the boat, the water skiing, the slalom, and the, you know, everything that, that we did, which we about did everything. We about tried everything and got hurt a lot. <laughs> I bet you did. But, but um, you know, it, it all came down to it was never about the performance of what you did when you got up, but it was about the effort that you put in and getting up and being willing to take hard falls. That's what it always came down to. And that's what I just value so much is, is, and I gained a lot of security through that of not the performance of what happens, 
but how you act when it doesn't go right, how you act when you fall. Yep. And some really, really valuable lessons came out of that. I look back at those times and, and really today, like me and me and my dad, every Saturday, Sunday in the summer, we wake up before the sun's up and we're out in the boat as the sun's coming up on the water. And so we still spend a lot of that time there. And it's some of the time I cherish the most. Yeah. Without fail, he asks us if we want to get up. We're always like, no. no the answer has no. been no for 10 years. <laughs> and it will always be no. <laughs> what is it with water ski fanatics? My husband's the same way. They have to go at the first break um, of light the, the water's perfect it's there's the no water. wind oh, there's no wind pure glass I know, but it's I'm a good sitting on the dock just it's looking a great at the water. time it's sleeping sleep. yeah. when the sun's coming up and yeah. then i'll go on the dock yeah <laughs> well i will tell you dave and sharon ramsey have done an extraordinary job i think that even just the fact that you three adult kids of dave's are working with him is testimony to the character of your dad and how comfortable and how close and how much you respect your dad it's really extraordinary thank you so much denise and rachel and daniel it's been so much fun having you here. Now, I know you, Rachel, because you and I speak together. You've yes. got books and you've got podcasts. How can people learn more about what you are up to? Yeah, you can go to rachelcruz.com. And so I have a written blog on there once a week and a video blog twice a week, a YouTube channel that kind of is connected to that. And books and social media and all of that is on the website. So you can yeah. find everything there. You're just going big guns, aren't you? Oh, you, have the, you have the energy. You have a lot of energy. I enjoy like your it. Dad. I enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, I can I like tell. It. Denise? Daniel. Okay. Okay. I just, just, we, just. we like to stay behind the scenes. We, we enjoy what we do and it's yeah. different. Yeah. It's all different. Well, one last word to your dad. If he were sitting right across that glass, what would you say in five seconds? In five seconds, I would say thank you for the sacrifice that you've made to put such intentionality into your parenting because I don't think I would be who I am today without that. Denise, thanks for being a great dad. And thank you, Dad, for instilling in me what it is to have a Christ-like relationship with the Heavenly Father and setting that example for me to pass on to my family. Pretty big. Pretty big stuff. Daniel? I would say I am so thankful for the way that you intentionally and relentlessly drove into things that are in your life. And you modeled how well and how life is not meant to be on the sidelines, but life is meant to be driven into intentionally and forward. That's beautiful. Thank you all for being here. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks, Thanks man. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. for having us. All right, parents, let's get social. I want to hear from you and I want to interact with you. I want to know what you think and what you're struggling with and where your stresses are as a parent. You can connect with me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Meg Meeker MD. Or if you have a question, send it to askmeg at megmeekermd.com. Today I have a question from Samantha who writes, Dear Dr. Meg, my husband and I are concerned about our 17 year old son. He's in 11th grade and works part-time after school. He has never been a talkative child, but has always been very reasonable, easygoing, sensitive, helpful, and family-oriented. Lately, when we try to engage him in conversation, he's very short and almost rude with his answers, like he's annoyed. When he comes home, he goes straight to his room and doesn't even acknowledge anyone in the room. We ask often if there's a problem at work or school, but he says no. He's always been hard to engage in conversation about his day, but it seems like it's getting worse. Should I continue to seek answers from him or let it go as being a moody teenager? Well, first of all, Samantha, I want to congratulate you on raising a 17-year-old who is responsible, easygoing, sensitive, helpful, and family-oriented. Clearly, you know how to parent really well. But now you've hit a snag and you're not sure what's going on with your son and you're not sure whether it's a big issue, is it a small issue, and then what are you going to do about it? Let me just back up a little bit and talk to you about what it is like living in a home with a 17-year-old son and what the 17-year-old is actually going through. And I write about this in my book, Strong Mothers, Strong Sons. At 17 and at 18... A young man needs to start to pull away from his mother in particular, and he needs to peel himself off and say, I need to step out and figure out what life as a man is all about. I need to live now, not just as my mom's son and not just as my dad's son. I need to figure out who I am separate from them because in a year or two, he's going to be out on his own. And this is a transformation that happens subconsciously. He's not necessarily in charge of that. 
boys who are particularly close to their mothers, and it sounds like you have a fairly close family if he's family oriented and he would be around. And the fact that he doesn't talk is fine. He's, he's a quiet introvert, and that's fine. You need to embrace that and accept that and not criticize him for that and not see that as a negative. But a 17-year-old looks at his mom, and again, this is subconscious, and he goes, wait a minute, I love my mom, I need my mom, but that's kind of weird because I'm a man and I shouldn't need my mom, and I don't know what to do with this, so what I'm going to do is just push her away, and I'm going to slam the door, and I'm not going to talk to her, and I'm just going to figure things out on my own, and it's very distressing for mothers. Many young men do this with their fathers too. So they're not necessarily rejecting you. He's just trying to pull out and separate. Now, that's a very normal transition. It's really hard to go to a 17-year-old boy and say, tell me how you're feeling. A, he may not know how he's feeling. He doesn't know all this is going on. So you're asking something that's impossible. And secondly, even if he knew how he was feeling, he wouldn't necessarily be able to articulate it. Now, that is all normal. And boys outgrow that. So my recommendation to you is to give him space. Give him room. Don't keep knocking on his door. You know, don't keep trying to ask him questions he can't answer and to probe into it an area that he doesn't even understand himself. However, and I will, there's one caveat to this. If your son is only spending time in his room, hours and hours and hours, and you think he's on his laptop and he's doing things he shouldn't do or watching things he shouldn't, and he's changed his friends and he's sleeping a lot or he's sleeping very little and you suspect that he could be depressed, then you need to take him to a doctor. But my sense in reading your question is that's not the case. My sense is that you have a wonderful 17-year-old who's trying to figure out life on his own. He may not have a lot of friends to go to, and so he's sort of pulling inside himself a little bit. If either of you, his mom or dad, are going to go and try to help him through this, it needs to be dad, not you, mom, because he doesn't need to separate as much from dad as he does for you. Parents, I love answering your questions, so please keep sending them to me. You can email me your parenting questions to askmeg at megmeekermd.com. Again, that's askmeg at megmeekermd.com. I want to thank my guests, Denise, Rachel, and Daniel. What fun it was to have them in here in the studio with me. Before I go, I want to recap my points to ponder. First, make sure you're a good model to your kids. You're modeling what you want to them. Second, small moments make the biggest impact on your kids. And third, do not be afraid to be the authority in the home because as you heard these kids talk about living with a strong authority figure, it works well and it served these kids well and it serves all kids well. So until next time, parents, remember, great kids are raised, not born. Hey, this is Bobby, producer of Meg Meeker's Parenting Great Kids podcast. We hope you've enjoyed listening to episode 28, Growing Up Ramsey. And thanks to you, Dr. Meg's Parenting Revolution has grown to over a half a million downloads. You can like Dr. Meeker on Facebook and follow her on Twitter and Instagram at Meg Meeker MD. Just as a reminder, go to MegMeekerMD.com and sign up for her newsletter for giveaway opportunities and updates. And don't forget to share the podcast, write us a review, and click subscribe so you won't miss an episode.